I'm Mike Vardy. Meal planning is important because it prevents us from being a disappointed wreck when dinner time comes around and we have no clue what to make or even if we have the ingredients to make the meal. It's a time and a money saver, but most importantly, it frees up valuable brain space. Creating a meal plan prepares us for the week to come and gives us peace of mind that we're organized and can feed ourselves and our family. That's why I do it, and that's why Plan to Eat helps me do it. Your subscription includes access to the Plan to Eat website and fully featured mobile apps on iOS and Android. And Plan to Eat gives you the tools to clip and organize recipes from any website, the ones your family loves and that fit your dietary preferences and needs. And you can create a meal plan around your schedule. Then what happens is the Plan to Eat software automatically creates an organized shopping list based on your plan. So sign up for your free trial at plantoeat.com slash timecrafting. That's plantoeat.com forward slash timecrafting. The coupon will be automatically applied to your account and can be used when you're ready to subscribe. It's valid for new customers only. Give Plan to Eat a try today. And this is the Productivityist Podcast. It's time for another episode of the Productivity is Podcast. Thanks for joining me today. And on this episode, we're going to talk about goat milk stuff. Uh, yes, a bit of a punny title, but, uh, you know, a good pun every now and then can't hurt anybody. Uh, at least I don't think it can. Uh, PJ Jonas joins me, joins me on the show today, and she's a business owner. She's a goat wrangler, an entrepreneur, and a mother. She uh, has, you know, done so much with her time. And, uh, you know, I mean, building a business, homeschooling, um, you know, figuring out what you can make with goat milk beyond just the soap, which we dive into, Uh, you know, how she is able to do all of these things, uh, I think is a real, um, real, real uh, testament to the, uh, the, the type of person she is. And I wanted to bring her on the show to kind of dive into how she's able to make all of this work. And so I'm not going to dive any deeper uh, without her here. So let's just get into my discussion with PJ Jonas of Goat Milk Stuff here on the Productivityist Podcast. I'd like to welcome PJ Jonas to the Productivityist Podcast. PJ, thanks for joining me today. Oh, it's great to be here, Mike. Thanks for having me. So, uh, before we started recording, I was talking about some of the technical issues I was having today. We're recording this and I've just finished. I mean, the the internet was was full of, full of gremlins. And and uh, I, it's, it's almost apropos I'm going to this interview today because um, you don't really work with a ton of technology per se, at least not this type of technology. You... You 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 make goat you, you use goat milk. You make goat milk stuff. Like, can you dive a little? Because this is something I haven't really explored too much. But you have a. Uh, I mean, you're 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 you, you know, you're making goat milk stuff. You've got a a, a family. Uh, you're trying to get. You've got some. You know, how do you how do you make all this stuff work? But first off, how would you get into making goat milk stuff? Well, I had the dairy goats because I wanted the healthy raw milk for the the children. Goat sure. milk is a lot more easily digestible than cow milk. There's, there's a lot of benefits to goat milk. And I had my children in the bathtub one day. I was letting them splash around. And when I just suddenly looked at the, the baby wash I'd always used and was really upset to find the ingredients in it were all these chemicals I didn't want to use on their skin. So I was like, that's it. I'm going to learn how to make soap. And I had no idea what I was doing. I found a bunch of recipes that called for water. And I was like, oh, forget water. I got goat milk goat milk is much better than water. And so I decided I was going to put the goat milk instead inside the soap. And when I did that and my husband started using the soap, his fingers stopped cracking and splitting. And that was a problem he'd had for years and years and nothing we'd ever tried had fixed it. And just by putting the goat milk soap that we made in the shower and letting him use that, it finally fixed that problem. So that was kind of, you know, my aha moment that I, I had something that I really could, you know, could sell and, and share with others and help their skin conditions. Well, and this isn't just the beginning. This is just part of what you do because you're also homeschooling. And that's something that my wife and I've talked about, especially with uh, the kind of work that I do where I can travel and things like that. So you're balancing the creation of, 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 you know, you're, you're built, you've got this brand, this, you know, and you're not just making soap, you're making like cheeses, candy, like you're making like yeah. a ton of stuff <laughs> we do with everything. It. Yeah. yeah. We, like the, it's amazing how much stuff we, <laughs> we turn into. So, so, so you're doing that. You're, you're managing a household, you're homeschooling. How do you make all of that happen? There's been another guest I've had on the show named Joe Bulig, and he he had a lot of irons in the fire. Um, you've got a lot going on. How are you able to to navigate 
uh, you, you know, your days in a way that makes sure that you're doing all of these things at, at a level that you, you feel good about. You know, there's, there's a, several things that I do. First, first off, I've taught my children how to work. Okay. I don't think that work is a bad thing. I think so many times parents think making their children work can be a bad thing. And I think the exact opposite. I think children don't work enough <laughs> nowadays. <laughs> um, you know, we don't do, my children don't play video games. They don't have cell phones, um, until they start to drive. So it's their time is spent a lot more either doing productive work or, you know, a lot of just free time, just being creative and thinking and building whatever they want or being out in the woods or whatnot. Um, so, so that's really important because I don't, you know, I don't have to clean the children's bathroom. They, they clean their children's bathroom. I don't have to do their laundry. They do their laundry. You know, all of those things that, that distract a lot of parents and having to kind of manage is, you know, all of that's taken care of when they're, they're young because they're taught those skills. So that frees up a lot of my time. So when did you, when did you start this process with them? Because I've got a seven-year-old, my daughter's 12. She's doing it but my seven year like is that like when did you start with these guys because you've got oh, yeah. you've got oh no he can totally do it my we so we have i have eight children we have 10 people in our family and there was a time um, when my six-year-old was doing all the laundry for the entire family wow wow yes. and, yeah. and 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 where does a now this lends into the next natural question because and again I'm, i mean this is nice my my wife and i actually talked about this because she knew you were coming on the show she goes find out how she deals with like the whole allowance thing like is that a thing do you do it because we tend to do it where you get an allowance regardless and then if you do extra work you might you, i mean occasionally you might get a little bit of a, a, a bonus stuff but how do you treat that or is that just it's just not a thing yeah. No. So the way I do it is, is whenever I'm faced with a question like that about how to deal with the children, I always think of what it's going to be like for them as an adult, right? Because I'm not raising future children. I'm raising future adults. Right. So my question is, you know, do I want my kids to just think that they just are going to get a certain amount of money when they're an adult just, you know, for being? And the answer, of course, is no, they don't. They have to work for their money as an adult. So everything here is tied to to chores. They don't just get something just for being a part of the family. Um, so because we have goat milk stuff, the business, the farm, um, the children, my children all get a salary and their salary is not based on age. Their salary is based on how much work they accomplish. So I actually have some younger children who have a higher salary than some of their older siblings because they work harder. Um, and everybody knows what everybody else's salary is within the family. And so, you know, everybody agrees. Yeah. You know, the old, you'll have, I'll have some older children say, yeah, he does work harder than me. He should make more than I do. Um, so, so they all get salaries. They'll pay their own taxes. They all have their own retirement accounts. Um, and then they all pay for, everything, but the very basic. So I find I, you know, I supply them with food, I supply them with, you know, basic clothing, but if they want something above and beyond, then that's something that they pay for. So if we go on vacation, they pay for their vacation. You know, if we do, you know, do anything fun that comes out of their money. So it's very much understanding from the, from a very young age that work is tied to money is tied to what I can do with it. Um, and you know, I definitely stress the, the savings and the the retirement savings in particular, the the understanding of how much compounding and, you know, that if they want to spend $10 today, that that's not like forgetting to save $10. That's actually more like forgetting to save a thousand dollars, you know, because, right. uh, because of compounding. So all of that kind of, it's all, you know, taught together. So that leads me to my next question, which is an, another kind of thing that throws out people often, you know, work doesn't necessarily have to be about money. And for a lot of people, some people just enjoy the work. Do you have some of your kids and, and some family members who have either started to shift away from it? Or is it, uh, you know, because then you start to get in the question of like, do they want to continue to do that kind of work? So is that is that even something that's come up yet? Oh yeah. Yeah. So my oldest is 20. She's actually getting married um, in a few months. Um, her, her fiance works with us, which is a, a very nice bonus. <laughs> but right now everybody says they want to work the business. My youngest is 10, the oldest is 20. And they're still saying they, they want to work in goat milk stuff when they're adults. Um, so we've really um, worked hard to kind of grow the business so that there's enough different areas that, that they can be in control of and, and not necessarily be tripping over each other. But what I have found is I have children children who are very content to just do their job, right? They're very content to just do their job, get their salary, and then do 
you know, whatever they want in their free time, whether it's reading or playing or Legos or whatnot. And then I have some children who are constantly looking for new jobs, right? So I have, um, two of my kids this past year decided that they wanted to raise, um, pastured chickens and then butcher the chickens and sell and sell the pastured chickens. And I was like, sure, you know, here's you know what you're going to need for seed money. Here's what you're going to need to get started. And you know, all the, this is what you're going to have to pay the business for use of our electricity and et cetera, et cetera. And the rest, you know, all that profit is yours. Um, so a lot of it depends on the individual child and, you know, how much they value leisure or whatever they want to do in their leisure over how much they, you know, enjoy doing the kinds of work that they're, they're doing. Let's, let's talk a little bit about the whole balance and work-life harmony thing that can happen. I mean, I know my daughter wants to be a teacher. That's what she's told me at this point. And every time she says that part of me goes that, I mean, it's one of the noblest professions, number one, but I'm like, well, I teach, I I'm going to, I'm not going to be able to do this forever. Maybe you could teach this and we, maybe you make a little bit more money or maybe you get the opportunity to travel and things like that. Um, but, but, you know, one of my concerns uh, down the road is that, you know, where that where the lines get blurred between, hey, we're doing family stuff and then work stuff. How does that how do you how do you manage that? Because, I mean, you do have a systems engineering background, right? Like, so, I mean, you, you have some systems in play. Do, do, do the systems help dictate that or is it more of an ebb and flow kind of situation? Yeah. So I, I always tell people that I have no balance in my life, right? I just okay. don't. Okay. And I don't, I don't particularly try to on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay. Right. So let's, the example I usually give is kidding season. So we have, um, last year we had 149 baby goats born in about a six week period. Okay. Mm. There's no such thing as balance. It's all the whole family does is yeah. <laughs> deliver baby goats, dry baby goats off, you know, take care of baby goats, make sure everybody and moms are safe. The kids are safe. We know that though. We know going in at that, you know, that, that six week period, that's what it's going to be about. So what we do is before that happens, we take a two week vacation. We leave the farm, we go someplace warm and we, we get off the farm. So it's more of a balancing out your year or, you know, six months, you know, a season, that mm -hmm. kind of thing, because there's going to be times when it's just, it's just all work. Right. And that's okay. As long as you're getting the times when it's just all play, right. So you, you can't stay too long in that all work period. You know, I, I say it also, it's like when you have a, a new baby, you know, in those first six weeks, you're up all night, you're doing, you know, everybody's crazy and everybody's sleep deprived and feeling crazy. And, and hopefully it's only lasts a couple months, but, um, you know, there's an end in sight, you know, eventually that child's going to sleep through the night. And so you'll get back to something that that's more sane and more livable. So, you know, I don't really try and do it on a day to day because I just think that's just a, you know, just, just causes more and more frustration. But I think that if you get to the point where you're like, okay, we've been going too hard, too fast, too long, we're all burnt out. What needs to give, what needs to change? What do we need to let go of or say no to? Because overall you really want to just enjoy your life. Right. Right. It's funny. My wife and I, we are actually our whole family up we're talking, you know, this is earlier this year, we went to, um, you know, we went to the goat, we have like a children's petting zoo here in Victoria. And the the big thing is they, they have a, a goat farm, you know, right there. And the guy actually, we, we ran into the owner. And he talks about he just talked about like how many goats they like around 70 goats every year, new baby goats. And, and, and he said one year, uh, I guess the the Billy got out of his pen, and they had double that because it wasn't managed properly. But he talks about goats as pets as well. Now, I know I want to talk a little bit about the making of, of stuff, but how is, are, are these your, I mean, when, when you're, when you're, you know, when you're using the, you know, the, the, the stuff they produce as a, as a means of, you know, obviously earning a living that, but these guys are super cute too. Like how, like, are they, are they pets just as much as they are, you know, livestock in a lot of, in a, in a sense for you and your family? Yeah, you know, it's really a balance. I mean, like I said, we we deliver every baby, we name every baby, the the goats answer to their names, each one has a personality. Um, you should hear my boys talk about them. And, you know, and every single one they know they can look I can, we have probably right now about 10 goats 
that are all black. And my, my one son can look at their faces of this all black goat and tell you which one each one is just by looking at the face. <laughs> wow. know I look, and they all look pretty much the same to me, you know? So, um, they're very much, um, something that, uh, you know, we love them. We love them all and consider them pets, but at the same time, it, it, you have to be practical, right? Right. You have 149 baby born every year. You can't keep all of them. You have to have, you know, an understanding that you have to do what's best for the business and the family. And sometimes that means selling someone you, you know, you wouldn't necessarily want or not going to heroic measures. Um, if you know, an older goat is, you mm-hmm. know, like gets into trouble. And so you have to, you do have to balance it somewhat. Right. Right. Uh, you do through obviously you probably put some up for adoption, things like that. Like, I know that's what this guy does here. So he says, you know, yeah, and he has certain criteria that he puts in place and stuff. Like you have to have at least an acre of land and we want to have one just because the lawn could use some serious mowing and it would be great to have, uh, not have to go out there and do that. That'd be some serious delegation there. Um, let's talk about, let's talk about a typical day because I mean, you've got a busy household, busy life. And I mean, I, you know, I know that you, you mentioned earlier that seasonally things, things alter, but what, does a day look like for you typically if you were to like you know i mean let's even look at i mean we're recording this in 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 late october i mean what what would that what would a typical day look like to you from from beginning to end and 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 then we'll kind of dive into how you can you know take care of yourself along the way yeah. So, so let's assume that, you know, we're not in anything crazy like Black Friday or King <laughs> yeah, season yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. You know, so I get up, um, my kids all get up at different times. Um, the earliest one, my oldest son gets up around five cause he goes out and milks. Um, I have some that like that prefer to sleep in and do their, their jobs later on in the day. Um, we open up our farm store and our sweet shop at 9 AM. So people have to be up there, um, by, by the latest nine to demand that. Um, I get up, I, I am not an early riser. I've tried to be multiple times over my life, but yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm like never, you. No, it I'm never a, really sticks. I'm a night um, owl. I'm a night owl. Yeah. I can't do it. <laughs> yeah. So I get up. Um, I work out. Um, I we I went ahead. My husband. I told my husband I wanted um, several years ago, and he built me a treadmill desk. So nice. I have a treadmill desk back at the house, and so the kids all pretty and my husband pretty much all disappear. Um, after I work out, then I get on my treadmill desk and I answer emails. I answer Facebook messages. I blog, you know, I do anything that's, um, that I can just type and, and walk at the same time. So, um, that's been, that's been a huge bonus for me. And, you know, we've, we've put that treadmill desk in many locations over the years and back at the house in the morning has, has definitely worked the best. Um, so I kind of get all of those things out. If I have to make any return, any phone calls for, for customer service, for Google stuff or anything, I'll do that then. And that's pretty much, you know, what's, what that individual day looks like. You know, there are days where I'm needed up in the, um, on the farm. If we have big groups of tours, you know, we'll have, the um, the, you know, school bus fulls, tour buses come and, you know, and have 60 some odd people come in for a tour. And so sometimes I'll do that. Sometimes I'll work out in the garden. Sometimes it'll be, um, just a massive computer day where I'm like, okay, all day long, this is, you know, I'm going to sit here and, and work on, you know, the, the newsletter for the month or, or whatever it is. So, um, one of the things that, that I'm working really hard to do is transition the business to where the children can take it over. Right. So I've told them, my youngest is 10. I've told them when she is eight, I'm sorry, when she's 18. So eight years from now that my husband and I are going to be out of the business. Right. We'll still be around to, you know, give the occasional tour, you know, write the occasional blog post, but we're not hiring anybody, firing anybody, you know, sticking to any sort of schedule, paying any bills, anything like that. That's all going to be them. So I spent a lot of my time mentoring, teaching, you know, trying to see what specific skills the children are going to need, um, to be able to take over aspects of that. So a lot of it, as I'm, as I'm going through my day, you know, and it's not going to be an immediate thing. Like I said, it's eight years down the line, but it's like, okay, this, you know, this is a good job for this person. What can I do to, to either get them to help me with it now, or kind of help move them in, in that direction? So um, it's funny, as we're talking about this, um, you know, I, I often come up with the titles of the show and the the title that comes to mind consistently, and it's such a bad pun, is goating things done. But I'm going to have to go with it. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to. Um, so eight years, this business, you know, over eight years now, um, did you, I mean, you, 
it started off with with soap and now like what is the thing that surprised you the most that you can craft with with goat milk and 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 maybe what's one thing that you thought would work that just didn't didn't really take yeah, I think by far the biggest thing that that continues to amaze me is how much our goat milk soap helps people's skin conditions. Mm-hmm. I, I never saw that coming. Um, I didn't know what eczema was. I didn't know anything about psoriasis, you know, acne, all of those things that people suffer with with their skin. And using our goat milk soap makes a difference. I mean, I knew you know it helped with the dry skin because, like I said, my my husband's finger stopped cracking and, and splitting. But I just had no idea that it was going to be so helpful with other things, you know. So that's probably the thing that has surprised me the most. Um, you know, and then as far as, as, um, not, you know, not knowing what would, would sell or whatnot, I, th- I think the hard part is, um, knowing what you can make with the goat milk that people are willing to pay what it's worth. Mm. Right. Um, so for example, you know, I make the best goat milk truffles, you know, just chocolate, like my chocolate mint truffles are incredible, but you know, they're, they're $4 a truffle, (laughs) you know, That's, that's, that's kind of expensive. Um, and so it's, it's figuring out, okay, not only what, can we make that's incredible with the goat milk, but what can we make at a, at a reasonable price that people are willing to pay? Because, you know, it, it doesn't, it, people kind of think you go to the grocery store, you know, milk's $2 a gallon. You know, well, it doesn't cost me $2 a gallon to make goat milk. You know, the reason cow milk is so cheap at the store is because they're getting all the federal corn and soy subsidies. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I don't get any, well, first of all, I don't feed my goats corn or soy, but I don't get any of those subsidies. So I'm paying, you know, the real cost of food. And so there's, there's a lot of education that goes on. And unfortunately in in our country, people are are starting to understand that, you know, that, that cheap food may be cheap in the short run, but has repercussions down the the road with your health and and it's going to have costs later on. So a lot of that education is happening. Um, but that's probably been, been one of the things that, you know, I, I spend a lot of time doing that, that I didn't really realize I was going to have to was educating people about the benefits of goat milk and what it's really worth. So if there's someone listening to the show right now and as we as we get close to wrapping up and they they've got this thing that they just have unexpectedly come across that they think is going to be a winner kind of like what happened with you with 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 goat milk stuff uh what what would you recommend like what steps would you recommend they take that either that you did that worked out well right from the onset or from the get goat sorry uh, <laughs> <laughs> um I interviewed a comedian a couple of days ago, so it's still kind of in my so head. still there. Yeah. Uh, and what ones, what things did you do that you're like, you know what, I probably should have let that lie or, or not gone in that direction? Yeah. So, so nothing beats getting your product in front of people and finding out how they react to it and what they're willing to pay for it. Um, right. Cause a lot of people assume Okay, let me tell you the story. So mm-hmm. we made we made um, our, our original project product was the goat milk soap, right. and we shipped that worldwide. Okay, and the whole time we were making the goat milk soap, I would hear, "Oh my gosh, your goat milk soap is so amazing! When are you making goat cheese? I want goat cheese!" Right, and we heard this for years and years and years. And so we finally, in 2015, got our grade A license, and we started making and selling goat cheese. And what I heard was, "Oh my gosh, I'm not going to pay for that shipping," right. <laughs> Yeah, because you have to, you know, you have to insulate it. You have to have ice packs and, you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's not something that you can just ship a refrigerated product. Now people adore our cheese. They love it. They're willing to pay for it, but they're not willing to pay for the, the shipping for it. So you have to figure out what people are willing to do with your product. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and that takes just a lot of footwork, right? You can go to craft fairs, you can carry it with you and just talk to the people that you see, you know, be careful of your friends, your friends aren't always, <laughs> the <laughs> most, they give you the most honest feedback. Um, and you have to have a thick skin, you have to be willing to let people tear your product apart or tell you things you really don't want to hear. Um, but if you can go out and kind of seek that information, you know, tell people craft fairs are, you know, if it kind of fits in that genre, um, are a great way to watch what 
what people do and how they interact with your product. And you can really kind of see their behaviors because most of us can't afford to go out and pay thousands of dollars for focus groups, right? We kind of have right. to do it. We yeah. have to do it the, the back way. So, you know, that's really, um, you know, it, it's invaluable. It's invaluable to figure out what people are willing to pay and what they actually want, not just what they say. You know, I'll give you one more quick example. Um, we were on Facebook years and years ago and we were ordering t-shirts and I had, you know, 20, 30 people say, Oh, I want one, you know, and they gave me their sizes, whatnot. We went out and ordered them. And then I think like two people actually paid for them. Right. (laughs) Right? Yeah. Yep. What people say isn't necessarily what they're going to do. You have to have them, you know, actually pay for it and put money on it to see whether people are willing to take that step. Gotcha. Gotcha. Hey, PJ, this has been a great, uh, great episode. If you are a member of the Patri- of the Productivities community, uh, I've got a bonus episode coming up with PJ uh, that you'll be able to check out as well. PJ, thanks so much. Where can people find more about what you do and connect with you uh, in the online space? Yeah. So we're all over social media on goat milk stuff. Um, but if you go to our website, our website is www.goatmilkstuff.com. And I actually have um, a bonus for your listeners. If they want to go to goatmilkstuff.com slash productivityist soap, and that's all just one word. Dot, um, so goatmilkstuff.com slash productivityist soap, then they can get a free bar of soap and try it. Awesome. And I'll make sure that links in the show notes because sometimes people don't spell productivity as that. that, that, yeah, that yeah, it's, it's a little, a bit, it's a little it's a, birdie. It's a bit of a tongue twister. Uh, PJ, thanks for joining me today on the show. Thanks for having me. Now, PJ doesn't, I mean, here's the thing about PJ and, and it was such a, a treat having her on the show and you can grab all of the, the links uh, in the show notes, including that free uh, soap offer, which I think is fantastic. Um, I. You know, I mean, after listening to her and seeing all the stuff she does, it's kind of like when, I, again, when I had Joe Bulig on the show, it's like, wow, you're able to do all that stuff, have a family and all that stuff. She, she's definitely, uh, you know, an achiever and uh, you got to appreciate that. Um, so uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed this show. I had a great time chatting with her. Thanks to John Pulser for producing the show and putting things together. Thanks to uh, my my team for putting together the show notes from what I put out there from the, the takeaways of this episode. And, and again, thanks to you for listening. I really do appreciate it and I hope you enjoyed the show. If you are a member of the Productivityist community, then there is bonus content that you can get. Head over to productivityist.com slash membership to become a member uh, and, and you can learn more about all of the benefits surrounding that as well. Until next time, I'm Mike Vardy, the host of the Productivityist podcast and founder of Productivityist, reminding you to stop guessing, start going, not goating, but going. Have a great week. <laughs>